My name is Morrill Cabbage, and David Jonathan Alexander Walker is my son, and Michigan Department of Correction knows him as number 320172. David was sent to prison for a nonviolent crime. He entered the MDOC Reception Center in the summer of 2007, and from there he went to Gus Harrison, Chippewa, Huron Valley, Handland, Huron Valley. We have a question mark because there is another one there and I can't find it. Macomb, Brooks, Macomb, Bellamy, Saginaw, Carson City, Oaks, Woodland, Oaks, Woodland, Gus Harrison, Oaks, St. Louis, Woodland, St. Louis, Gus Harrison, and the Michigan Reformatory for a total of 22 moves as of 2000, I mean 24 moves as of 2012. David has a long and well-documented history of mental illness, and with each move there's either a disruption, change, or abrupt change in medication. Denial of medications in David's case has resulted in escalation of manic behavior with self-harm, with the possibility of reversible side effects which could result in a decline of not only mental but physical health as well. When taken off his medications, David becomes agitated, paranoid, his thoughts become fragmented, and he's unable to sleep. In March of 2011, David was taken off all his medications. Others witnessed David going to the medication line begging for his medications only to be turned away. Outcome, David attempted suicide by hanging. When officers attempted to remove the noose from around his neck, his leg kicked out, striking an officer in the thigh. David was charged with assault and battery of an officer and placed in segregation. In his cell, the state police were called, and his cell was considered a crime scene. And this is a picture of the news, um, and this is what they consider a crime scene. He is now four and a half years past his early release date, and one of the contributing factors in not having been paroled is the misconduct tickets that he has received. Many of these misconduct tickets he has acquired coincide when there has been a major change or stop in his medication. Along with so many moves, there also comes a challenge of the starting of or the completion of any classes that he has been required to take. As a taxpayer of the state of Michigan, I am truly baffled at how all these moves, all these issues with medication, and keeping nonviolent inmates years past their early release date is being fiscally responsible. How many times a year is this scenario repeated and at what cost to the taxpayers of the state of Michigan? Many of these inmates could be supervised out in the community and get the treatment they need to become successful, productive citizens for far less than the average $35,000 a year it costs to keep them behind bars. This would be a cost saving to the state and a positive use of the taxpayers' money.